what? Your brain undergoes changes throughout the lifespan. Some changes which take place during childhood and adolescence are more linear in nature meaning the changes that take place may increase or decrease as one gets older. As one reaches young and middle adulthood, changes that may occur in the brain seem to be less pronounced and nonlinear. This means, for example, that a change may occur, followed by relative stability, followed by another change. In order to better understand the changes that the brain may undergo during middle through late adulthood, let's get a closer look at that thing in your head, your brain. Our brain consists of two types of cells. The majority of those cells are glial cells, and they are primarily responsible for insulating and nourishing our second cell type, neurons. Neurons are the communicator cells, while glial cells are the supporting cells. At the head of the cell are dendrites. The dendrites act as antennas. These cells consist of a soma, or a cell body. The cell body is gray in appearance and commonly referred to as gray matter. Extending from the cell body is a tubular structure called the axon. Axons enable signals to travel down the brain cell to then be transmitted to neighboring cells. Some are wrapped in a fatty substance known as myelin, which is designed to speed up signal transmission. Myelin is white in appearance, accounting for the white matter throughout the brain. A healthy adult brain consists of more than 100 billion neurons. Neurons, along with glia, comprise the folds and ridges of the human cortex. They help produce all of your thoughts, feelings, and actions, of which are localized to certain areas of the brain. This is called functional specialization. The main areas include the cerebellum, occipital lobe, parietal lobe, temporal lobe, and frontal lobe. Clusters of neurons also create subcortical structures of the brain, such as the structures that comprise the limbic system. Finally, at the center of the brain is not a molten core. You're not a planet, although you probably are a planet to all the little microbes living on you. Mm. Rather, there are interconnected cavities. These cavities are the ventricular system of the brain and contain fluid called cerebral spinal fluid. This fluid not only helps protect the brain, but also transports chemicals such as hormones and cleanses the brain of harmful substances. Now that we have a better understanding of the human brain, let's continue our exploration of how the brain ages in older adults. According to researchers, brain atrophy, which is volumetric loss of brain tissue, appears to increase with age, with notable acceleration and atrophy rates in adults aged 70 years or older. When looking at specific areas of the brain that may be affected by marked rates of atrophy in this age group, the ventricular system is the most noticeable, as the ventricles will appear larger as loss or shrinkage of the brain takes place. Hashtag fridge art. Interestingly, this brain atrophy appears to be the result of healthy aging, which seems counterintuitive. I mean, no one really likes knowing or realizing that their brain is disappearing. But there may be some comfort in knowing that everyone else's is doing the same thing. <laughs> Overall, thinning of the cortex also seems to be a hallmark of this age group, and thinning of the frontal and temporal cortical areas are more pronounced. Both of these areas are related to specific cognitive functions, where temporal areas are related to memory, due to the fact that it houses the hippocampus, and front cortical areas are related to executive functioning. Both cognitive functions appear to show a decrease with increasing age. New white matter may be created into middle adulthood, around 40 to 50 years old. Old. And this development is a possible result of neuroplasticity, which is the brain's ability to adapt to one's environmental circumstances. Past this age, accelerating reductions in white matter appear to take place. These white matter decreases are most prevalent within, you guessed it, the frontal and temporal lobes, and this may impact the brain's ability to adapt. As loss of matter volume appears to be a clear sign of aging, what exactly is being lost as far as this brain tissue is concerned? Unfortunately, brain researchers don't exactly know, but there are some ideas based on the evidence currently available. In our 40s, it appears that it is encoded within our DNA to reduce the expression of neuroplasticity, among other things. This reduction is accompanied by an induction of the stress response, which has been shown to have a toxic effect on the brain over extended periods of time. In addition to this, an altering of the cell repair mechanisms also seem to be included in this age-triggering event. Thus, we may experience damage to the cell, 
possibly due to prolonged exposure to the stress hormone cortisol that goes unrepaired, resulting in cellular dysfunction. Importantly, while the age-triggering event may begin in younger adults, the impact of the event may not be seen until later in life. One such impact of this age-triggering event may be the death of damaged neuron apoptosis. However, in healthy aging, neuron loss is no longer believed to fully account for the cortical thinning often documented. The age-triggering event may result in some reductions in brain cells, but the overall reduction found does not contribute to the cognitive changes and general cortical thinning seen throughout the healthy aging process. Studies have shown thinning of frontal and temporal cortical areas, but relatively stable counts of neurons. This means that thinning of the cortex may not be a result of loss of neurons. Okay, well, some glial cells are also coated in myelin, resulting in white matter. Perhaps it's the loss of these cells that are being reflected in this cortical thinning? Well, studies have also shown that the number of glial cells did not reduce to the point that these cells contributed to the cortical thinning. So what exactly is going on here? Well, our brains are extremely energy intensive, and larger brain cells require more energy than smaller brain cells. Researchers have documented that as a potential result of the age-triggering event, the brain may go into energy conservation mode in order to account for modifications to our cell repair system. As such, in order to reduce the amount of energy consumed by larger neurons, they shrink. So they're still there, they just reduced in size. One way in which they may reduce in size is to remove some of the dendrites, a process known as dendritic degeneration. Say that 10 times fast. Related to white matter specifically, breakdown of myelin appears to be a part of the healthy aging process. Both dendritic degeneration and breakdown in myelin result in neuronal shrinkage, and not necessarily neuronal death. Again, this shrinkage may be why we see brain volume decreases in older aged adults. I may not want to sound so happy about that. <laughs> Supporting the documented breakdown of myelin are functional changes that occur in the brain of older adults. The brains of younger adults consists of distinct functional networks. However, in older adults, these functional networks appear to be less defined, particularly in frontal cortical areas. It's always the frontal cortex. There have also been documented decreased deficiency within these networks seen in older adults. These networks rely on intact myelin for increased and efficient communication. Decreased efficiency of these networks may be associated with the cognitive changes typically seen in older adults. Thus, it may be white matter changes that best account for cognitive changes seen in later adulthood. Although researchers argue that documented cognitive changes cannot all be explained by brain changes alone. Which is weird. Isn't that weird? That's weird. <clears throat> Nevertheless, some areas of cognitive decline have been well documented, but some mental functions, such as verbal ability and general knowledge, largely remain unimpaired. Other abilities, memory, executive functioning, reasoning skills, and processing speed seem to experience impairments, some of which, like processing speed, begin to show signs of impairments during one's 30s. <laughs> so now that you're concerned about how the natural aging process impacts your brain, I have some good news. Maybe. There's a wealth of research supporting the idea that moderate amounts of aerobic exercise, such as walking, may help ease and even reverse the brain aging process that often accompanies mid to late adulthood. Moderate exercise Exercise has shown to increase both gray and white matter in older adults. Further, cognitive improvements, particularly improvements in executive functioning, have been documented after exercise programs were implemented. This suggests that leading a healthy lifestyle could assist in one's brain health, but this is an emerging field of research, so more studies need to be conducted before we can definitively conclude that exercise staves off brain aging. Take it together, later adulthood is marked by pronounced changes to the brain, nearly in the opposite way in which changes to the brain are seen in childhood through adolescence. In childhood and adolescence, substantial increases in white matter growth are notable, especially within front cortical areas. These increases slow down, but white matter does appear to grow well into one's 40s and 50s. In older adulthood, white matter seems to deteriorate swiftly and may result in reductions in cognitive abilities, such as memory impairments. These changes seem to support the last in, first out hypothesis, in which the last area of the brain to fully develop 
the prefrontal cortex, is the first area to experience the effects of aging. Also, we learned that exercise may help reduce and possibly prevent brain aging in older aged adults. If anything, exercise has been shown to elevate people's moods. So even if exercise doesn't help in the brain aging process, maybe you'll be a bit happier along the way. If you liked what you watched, subscribe to this channel. I know. <laughs> Your brain's deteriorating, but you'll be happier about it. If you liked what you watched, subscribe to my channel and share with family and friends. Also, make sure to hit that like button. Also, also, if you want to support my channel with big Brainiac energy, then head on over to my Patreon page to become a contributing member or go to my PayPal to submit a one-time donation. As always, thanks for feeding your brain with brief brain snap. Oh, my God. head. Well,